Hey, Brian Crofts here. Over the past week, I was over at my global sales kickoff. And while I was at global kickoff, I got asked a question a bunch of times. Hey, Brian, if you were an SDR, how would you go about getting meetings so you could crush your quota of setting meetings? I thought that was kind of an interesting question, something I've definitely talked about many times in my life. Now you might ask like, hey, Brian, I hear you talk about technology all the way time how to secure networks, zero trust identity security. Yes, that's what I do. Ultimately, I am a salesperson, but as a salesperson, I'm not selling used cars. What I'm doing is providing very real solutions to make the world a better place. Now, I've been in sales a long time. I mean, I have been a cold caller. I have been a regular sales rep selling, you know, just anything technology. I've been a technical security person. I've been in channel management, which is what I do now. Now I know channel management is kind of a strange sounding thing. Sounds like I sell used auto parts across the Midwest. There are some channel managers that do that. What I personally sell is identity security software. Now what's kind of interesting as a channel manager though, I am helping our partners build a program or a practice around some of our products to be able to provide very real solutions to their customers. And as part of that, that means I work with many different stakeholders across the company. And what's particularly cool about my job, I see great SDRs and I see absolutely terrible SDRs. I've seen the whole gamut. And these people have over the years, time and time again, helped me hit my quotas because I'm always just told, hey, Brian, you gotta go hit X number of millions of dollars. Sometimes it's small, like you gotta hit $2 million for the year. Other times it's been real huge where you gotta hit $100 million for the year. It doesn't really matter. All I'm ever told is hit this number, go figure a way to do it. And part of my strategy is always working with an SDR. Now real quick, what the heck is an SDR? That stands for Sales Development Rep. SDRs are generally younger people that are a little bit newer to sales often fresh out of college. Now you definitely have professional SDRs that have been doing this forever and they're you know very experienced people my age older but they tend to be a little bit newer to the job and their whole position at a company is to get out there, call customers, find opportunities and then set a meeting or an appointment for one of the account executives to get in there and really discuss what sort of solution they can offer. Now, an SDR is absolutely critical to lead generation, bringing new leads into a business. It's also a thankless job. These roles tend to have a lot of change over because if you're not good, I don't even know if you need to be fired, you're just gonna be, you're gonna leave the company because it is difficult. But an SDR that is effective can really, really be an absolutely awesome asset for a company who employs them, which is literally every single company in every industry out there, they're also a great asset to our customer base because if our customers don't know we provide various solutions, they're not gonna know to, to turn to us in whatever our, our specific industry is. There's a couple different ways that an SDR can go at finding leads. By and far, the most common one is they hop on LinkedIn and they send in messages. They pick up their phone and just crank out 100 phone calls a day, send God knows how many emails. And yes, that is a strategy that 100% certainly works and is a common strategy over the years. However, let's be realistic, people aren't really looking to pick up a phone call from an unknown entity. If you're an SDR, it's not really a good thing to hear because that makes your job very difficult. So what I wanted to do today, I realized it was kind of a long introduction to getting to my point, but what I wanted to do is really say if I were an SDR and I had to go in that role today, how would I go about it so I could guarantee I could get appointments for my AEs and ultimately build out my brand so I could get hired into you know a, a higher level sales position because that's what my personal goal would be or if I just wanted to be the best darn SDR I could be what would be the strategy to make that happen and I'll tell you what it is it's working with channel partners now of course you're gonna be like yeah Brian you're the channel guy of course you're gonna say channel partners but you need to hear me out on this one why would you as an SDR call channel partners. And I'm also talking to you VP of sales out there and CMOs that say, hey, this is a dumb strategy. 
Well, you know what? You're 100% wrong. Uh, I guarantee it. And you're not going to agree with me, so I'm not going to change your mind, so you might as well click delete on my video at this point and move on. But those of you that are open to listening, the reason you want to work with a channel partner, partners out there, they hold relationships with their customers, and their customers trust them. They trust them a lot. Hence, when they trust them a lot, especially in B2B software sales, they tend to buy a lot of software from them. Large enterprises, this can be a hundred, two, three, four hundred million dollars a year of software every single year. And obviously that would be a very large enterprise Fortune 500 kind of company. But when we come down into the mid markets and SMBs, uh, these customers are gonna buy tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, you know, depending on, on the size of the company. And the reason they're going to this partner is they trust them. And if you think about it, all of us on an individual level go to certain companies we trust. If I go to Walmart, I have a certain level of trust I have in Walmart. I don't think Walmart's gonna buy unproven products. I don't believe Walmart's gonna buy a product if it plugs into my wall or something that's gonna automatically explode. So as a result, I have a level of trust if I walk into Walmart, I think a product is good. Or if it was Target or Jewel, my local grocery store, whatever. Software buyers, B2B business buyers, they have that same level of trust in their partner and hence they talk to the same sales rep day after day, month after month, year after year. Now it doesn't mean they're gonna always listen to their partner, you know, and just blindly buy. But if you are a good channel partner rep, something that you learn over the years is, hey, if I'm looking out for the best interest of my customer, they're gonna buy from me. And what does looking out for the best interest of your customer actually mean? Well, it means you realize your customer isn't looking to buy something to be cool. They're looking to buy stuff that is gonna allow them to build their business bigger. Now, everybody, no matter where you reside in a business, we all have goals. You might be a director of IT and you were told to do some digital transformation project, which can mean a lot of things, but it might be get a phone-based app on the market so our customers can collect from us or connect with us and buy more of our product. Now, if your software is able to align with that need and a channel partner, they know what priorities this person has and what they're working on for the year. If it aligns and helps them achieve this goal, they probably want to talk to the vendor of that partner. And that's exactly where I'm leading to with this whole conversation. If you are an SDR, you can blindly call out to customers. And you're gonna hit a couple every so often, right? Blind squirrel gets a nut kind of concept. However, if you really wanna do good, what I would highly, highly recommend, talk to your channel managers that work at your company. Now, all companies, I shouldn't say all, but most companies that sell through partners, they're always gonna be the successful companies that tend to be bigger, because there's a reason people do that. If you think about it, you don't go and call Iran to go buy a barrel of oil or something like that. It gets distributed through OPEC, 2BP, that gets processed and you buy it from your local gas station, right? That's a distribution model. Same thing in business to business sales with a channel partner. Customer, you know, goes to the, the partner who goes by to the manufacturer and us in the manufacturer world, it's easiest for us to scale because we have these partners that have lots of sales reps. So SDR, what you do, you talk to your channel manager. He or she is the person that is responsible for managing the relationship between your company and that partner. You ask them to introduce you to 10 or 20 of that partner's sales reps. And you ask them to introduce you to these sales reps that fit your target market. Obviously, if you sell into SMB markets, you have to be introduced to the SMB sellers. If you're in the enterprise, you, know, you go to the enterprise or whatever your, your market space is. Now, what's gonna happen next? The channel partner, they're probably gonna take your call because if your channel manager or CAM, channel account manager, is worth his or her weight in newspaper, they should have lots of contacts, they should be good at their job, and these partners should wanna take their phone call. You're gonna get an introduction. At this point, you're gonna be given 15 minutes, and during these 15 minutes, you're gonna pitch what your value is. You need to prove that you're trustworthy, that you care about them, and you care about doing right to the customer. Because you gotta remember, this partner rep, 
Their whole livelihood is built on having a great relationship with their customer. You violate that trust, they're not going to talk to you. They're not going to introduce you to your customer. Just flat out, not going to happen. But if you can tell them succinctly, this is what my product does. This is why I am a good person to work with. They'll be willing to introduce you to their customers that your product fits a profile of something that might fall into the priority. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to make you an introduction right away. They're probably going to ask you to say, hey, give me an email, something I can forward over to my customer, or give me a paragraph or two just so I can you know, repeat back what you told me and, and make sure I'm accurate and succinct. They're going to reach out to their customer first and just say, hey, Mr. Customer, I was talking to a friend of mine, a buddy of mine, trusted advisor, you know, however they, they talk. They're going to say, they told me about an idea. I know of this software, I know of this piece of hardware. They said that they're helping companies similar to yours solve problems that's helping them drive whatever their initiative is. Now the customer is going to talk to that partner and be like, eh, I don't know. No, I don't care. That sounds stupid. I have no interest in this idea. If that's the case, well, you're not getting an introduction there. But that partner is also going to talk to that customer and they're going to talk to a bunch of their other customers. They're going to ask and they're likely, assuming you have a good product that's worthwhile and truly does serve the world and make things better, they're going to come across a couple customers and say, hmm, well, you know what, partner, I trust you. This sounds like an idea I might want to hear about. And at that point, you've now got yourself an introduction in. So what does this mean as an SDR and how the heck does this help you crush your quota? Well, I think most of us have seen out there in the SDR market, if you make 1,000 phone calls, you're going to get like five people to pick up. Maybe it's 10 or 15 or two. I don't know. It's not going to be a whole lot. If you reach out through your cam to the right market of account managers at your partner, and if you were to reach out to 25 of them, you're going to have 15 that are going to be willing to take a phone call from you and give you 15 minutes to hear you out. If you can prove yourself in those 15 minutes, the vast majority of them are going to be willing to at least ask a couple of their customers to validate your idea. And if your idea is actually legitimate and they can get a validation, they're likely going to get a meeting. And now all of a sudden, you went from having this goal as an SDR of setting five or, or 10 appointments, maybe it's 25 appointments for the month, and you can easily set that many in a week and all of a sudden you're on track to get to 400% of goal, you're working with your channel manager, you're helping build a better brand awareness for your company, and at the end of the day, you know what you're truly doing? You're serving the customer. You're helping to make their business better, and that is a guaranteed way, literally a guaranteed way that you'll crush your quota. Now, some of you are saying like, hey, Brian, how come you're telling this out across YouTube, across LinkedIn, you know, aren't you worried competitors are going to steal your information? No, I'm not at all because you know what? The vast majority of sales managers and SDR managers and even SDRs are going to say, oh, no, 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 this isn't how we always do it. It's too complicated. It's too risky. I feel uncomfortable. Well, if you're too uncomfortable to give an idea like this, you're lost. However, if you're willing to give this a try, I guarantee it will work for you and you will have some awesome success. And if you do have some awesome success, give me a shout out. Send me a $5 gift card to Starbucks or something like that. Don't actually do that. You know what? Put a positive comment on my video here. And then if someday you're looking for a job, guess what? You can point somebody to this and say, I followed Brian Krause's advice on how to really bring my sales to the next level. And I am out there helping customers. And as a result of that, you're going to find yourself having unlimited opportunity in life. And you're probably just going to keep getting promoted up the ranks. Let me know what you think. Let me know the successes you have, assuming you actually try this. And if you like me, you like my content, make sure, give me a like, give me a subscribe, tell others, share my video. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.